Hello everyone and welcome back to Beef Reacts. Today we are going to be watching badly explaining the entire Fate series in 30 minutes. It's I, I know I'm doing a lot of Fate stuff, but it, it seems to be trending in terms of uh, what people are looking to do. Today is Wednesday, uh, May 3rd, so yeah, this will be uploaded today. Uh, I lost all my days of getting ahead. So, oops, my bad. Um, what we will be doing, though, is today I will be releasing a poll for the short series and long series on YouTube. For YouTube's going to be short series and Discord's going to be long series. So what's going to happen is you, the viewers, the people at home, are going to be voting on what we watch next. Um, short series I'm considering, you know, I said anything under three seasons, I think that's fair. Long series, anything over three seasons, I think, I think that works. I don't really have a better way of doing it. If it's only one season and it's like a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, I consider that a short series. Maybe. I don't know, 60 episodes, 60 episodes, 60 videos. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe anything over 40 episodes? basically what I want to do is make it where if I'm watching two things that you're not a fan of, my hope, my prayer, my, uh, my life saving thing to the gamer at the end of earthbound. Yeah. Yeah. I played mother one. I'm cultured kind of, I didn't pirate that shit. I did because there's no legal way to play it in the United States, but we did. Because I don't, I mean, when I played it, there wasn't, this is before. Did they have it on the eShop back then? No. Maybe? Did they have it on the eShop in 2014? I don't think they did. But, um, if we're going to go about it, I want you to be able to vote. And the reason I want to do a short series and a long series, not too long series, is because if I'm watching Chainsaw Man, you don't like Chainsaw Man. It's not really fair to you. If I'm watching... One thing, and you don't like it, I want you to have the opportunity to vote for something that you do like within three to four weeks. And the hope there is just uh, transparency, viewer retainership, um, PR, fun thing to do with the community. Uh, both can be true at the same time. I hope, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not, I, maybe, but either way, this kind of seems to be it, I'm interested in doing Fate, and, you know, the timeline's all messy, and I kind of like this, uh, I think his name's Giguk, Giguk, Gig, Gig, he's the one who did, um, the ReZero series, so, whew, it is 9 a.m. I have therapy in an hour, so we're going to have to actually do this easily? Badly? Word wordly? Wordly. Yeah. <laughs> and with that said, let's get on with the you video. You didn't miss anything, the just the sponsorship. series is one of the most expansive franchises in all of anime. In between all the games, anime, manga, light novel, visual novel... Ultimate Co, Fate Stay Night... Novels, spin offs, it's probably one of the most daunting franchises for any newbie to try to get into. A little while Naturally. ago, I made a joke skit called Trying to Understand the Fate franchise, based around how confusing the entire thing looked for an outsider looking in. And satire aside, it was based on many real life conversations I've actually had with Fate fans trying to explain the franchise to newcomers. And every time that happens, I always hear, Do you want the long version or do you want the short version? Because Everyone asked for the short version, but even the short version for an outsider can seem like a convoluted mess of information. Thought you were going to give me the short version. This is the short version. But ever since I made that video, and because no one ever actually asked for it, I've always wondered to myself, what is the long version? Let's do it. And immediately regretted my decision. Oh boy, this is going to be fun to watch. <laughs> If there's, 
if there's one thing that I have a talent for, it is understanding completely utter nonsense. The Fate franchise fascinates me. Originally created by Kinoku Nasu, what started as just a single Iroge visual novel has turned into a multi-billion dollar franchise with more media Billion? than any sane person can wrap their head around. I mean, just look at all this shit. Can you see how many there is? There's at least five. So- Billion? With a- with a B? There's no- A- Dude, I wish I had a billion dollar franchise. That'd be sick. Misfits Heroes for Hire, the billion dollar franchise. That's mine. I have already copyrighted it. You can't take it. But like, God. It, you know, I sound so bad saying that. It's like, you can't, I already copyrighted it. I did because I'm currently writing it. Um, But I would love to have Misfits come out. Imagine seeing my boy Treadmill, my main character, the speedster with asthma coming out trying to run his own business, getting dunked on by the Amazon of the hero world, be dope as hell. It can be easy to forget shit. Can you see God. how many there is? There's at least five. So it can be easy to forget how and why people became fans in the first place that many newcomers may even forget to ask, what is fate even about? Sex. No worries, Everything's about sex. The basic premise revolves around a bunch of mages who can summon heroic spirits from Earth's real history or legends to do battle over the Holy Grail, a mythical wish-granting device in what is called the Holy Grail War. Basically, it's a bunch of mages spending all their V-Bucks to organize the ultimate Fortnite, Apex Legend, fucking Minecraft, Hunger Games, Battle Royale between all your favorite people from history and legend to create the ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny. God, I hope my audience isn't too young to understand that reference. I'm the- I'm not. One of the girl. If you ever want to see an interesting video, there's a video talking about Neil Krigba. Uh, the guy who did the Potter Puppet Pals epic, uh, ultimate showdown, ultimate history, or whatever you just said. And like some other massive YouTube thing. All the same person. It's actually wild first internet true memer but yeah the holy grail war is just basically nasa going what? so it's awesome Let's just cut the video there. That's all you need to know about Fate. However, the background and lore of the entire Fate universe is unimaginably deeper than that. So much so that every single spin-off, anime, manga, novel, every single piece of Fate's media takes place in a coherent universe fitting somewhere on a grand timeline, which is also shared with Nasu's other works creating this grand universe known only as the Nasuverse. So you know what I thought would be a good idea? What if- You know what? We could we could knock them, but like literally in every single piece of media that I write, I mention other pieces of media that I'm currently working on. <laughs> like in my book, I talk about this thing called my my lonely existence, which is a fictional band I invented, which is supposed to be a show that I'm going to be working on. Which is supposed to be a whole like I'm I'm doing a lot of like. It's not even an AMA beef because no one wants to know this information about me. But I really wanted to do an early 2000s satire because I'm fascinated with the fact that the early 2000s music genre was pop punk. Which is supposed to be an, not an anti-establishment thing, but punk is supposed to be a genre of like rebellion. And for some reason, every single one of the headline songs for every major movie was some punk rock type thing for the early 2000s. So I really wanted to make a satire about a kid who wanted to start his own pop punk band, but had an acoustic guitar and uh, his, his biggest problem was that his parents weren't divorced because I thought that'd be hilarious. I also thought it'd be funny if he drove a Mercedes because it's just like he has just a lot, a lot like literal pop punk. I'm not saying all, I'm just saying your mainstream pop punkers their biggest problems in life were that their parents were divorced. And I say this because I literally love the genre. <laughs> I tried explaining the entire Fate timeline. We were being thought, implying it was me in the past tense. It was a sheer idea. Explaining all the Fate lore and timeline in detail would take hours and hours. I mean, just look at some of these wiki pages. This isn't a yeah. wiki page, it's a fucking light novel. Saber lore. 
That time some slag at a pawn threw a sword at me and I accidentally became the fucking king of England. So this is more like the long short version, or is it the short long version, or is it the medium version? It's an excuse to justify all the countless hours I've put into this hellhole. Obviously there is going to be spoilers, but like I'm laugh. going to try and keep it focused on the lore and universe and where every series sits it. in the timeline, rather than what actually happens in any individual series. So hopefully it won't spoil your experience too much if you decide to walk into hell with us so with that i want to walk into hell hell's kind of fun i hear it's warm and i'm cold that's why i'm wearing a flannel in the middle of freaking may uh, the beginning of may said let's start explaining all of fate that seems like a bad idea too late now gone all you have to do is just turn the camera off and delete the file and no one will ever have to know i've done that the biggest fucking nutshell you'll ever you see. See that Giguk? That was Giguk three months ago. I've been putting off filming this for three fucking months. Just, just kill me now. Oh, three. F putting off filming this for how three that, wait, fucking how do you months. Do that? Just. Ooh, ooh, that is a beautiful green screen setup. <clears throat> now you may be saying, uh, Beef Matthew. Uh, depend. My friends, my friends call me Beef. Uh, my enemies call me asshole. But, they say things like, uh, Beef, uh, how could you say that? This is not a professional looking setup. I've seen the behind the scenes of Marvel, and I know what they look like. They're, they're massive, big green rooms. Yeah, but you know what? I'm poor. You're poor, presumably. Like, I'm rich. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm rich in spirit, but, I, 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 but, but I'm poor. So, like, this, flatly lighting himself, honestly... If you wanted to do the green screen better, I'm not saying this is an easy thing to do because typically you want your lights to be about like, you want, I think what, 14 foot ceilings and then three feet to add your lighting down. Cause you basically, you want lights up 45 degree angle pointed at you. When it comes to green screens, you want those independently lit flat so you could quickly just get rid of everything. And then you pay somebody billions of dollars, not billions, like a couple hundred thousand maybe millions to properly uh edge you out make you flat make you look good it's a lot harder than you think it is and i'm not even just saying that to be like oh but look at look at me uh playing with myself to the idea of being good at this no i just i like telling people about how to do media like my green screen in the background whenever i have it up is bad i know it's bad the reason why i know it's bad is because i don't i physically don't have the space to like independently lit light this light myself and then also it's it's a whole thing because the green screen needs to be lit right but for it to be lit right you also need to be lit right so typically when you're doing green screen stuff the lighting ends up becoming fake it ends up becoming it's a whole thing you pay people a lot of money to fix that problem it's a problem that you can learn how to fix, but then it just, whatever you think the time is, uh, triple it and then multiply it by two because you think you have it. You go to post, you go into post editing and you're like, mother, cause you move your hand and it's just like, you see green or you have hair like I do and you move it and green shines through. So your hair looks half green, half, it's stupid. It's stupid. It's what it is. I, we're okay. We're okay. I just had I just had Vietnam flashbacks to uh, college. That was Giguk three months ago. I've been putting off filming this for three fucking months. Just just kill me now. Oh, three fucking months. This is my dissertation all over again. Hello and welcome to my TED talk. To be introducing the fake timeline, I'm going to be cosplaying the most. I love the shoes. I also think it's hilarious that he uh, increased the choke so much to not have the green that you could see parts of his body are cutting off. Powerful servant in the history of it. the fate timeline. Steve Handjobs. But before we get to the fate timeline, there are a few core concepts we need to bang out first so everything makes sense. Firstly is Akasha. See, fate exists in this grand world of magic and mages where you can summon heroic beings from the past, present and future. And mm. all of this derives from Akasha. What is Akasha? See, Akasha is this metaphysical place that exists outside of time and dimensions that is the source of all events and all the souls and all timelines. And I like using big words to make me sound smart. Basically, everything that's ever happened and everyone you know, you can thank Akasha for it. 2020 as a whole, thanks Akasha. The Chad himself, Chug Jug's Fortnite remix, 
Thanks, I got. I'm not gonna lie, Chug Jugs with you was a. I've been around the internet to know about uh, almost every meme song, and Chug Jugs with you is one that I never knew the name of, but every time I heard it, it was a dub. It was a dubski. It'll go on a playlist at some point. Usher, the one time in class you thought you had a silent fart, but you ripped out a fat one and everyone heard it and stared at you, and your brain still reminds you about it every time you go about to sleep. Fuck you, Akasha. So I'm saying yeah! wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff. This is. I will say he is a phenomenal editor. Uh, like he was a phenomenal editor while doing the Fate stuff, he, uh, not Fate, the ReZero stuff, but he genuinely is a phenomenal editor. Like, I, I know like I'm like talking about the green screen or like the stuff where it's like, oh, that could be, be done better. Literally, like, like that's because at the end of the day, being a like critic and like offering like, uh, what, what's the word? Cre constructive criticism is more like is important. Where it's like, look, if you're capable of doing this, you're better than 99% of everyone else. He's better than me. By by a long mile. By a long... Like, we are we are infinitely apart. Because I make... Rea I don't want to be like, I make reaction content and he, he takes the time to edit himself out and do things like that. It's that we make different types of content. That's fine. That's totally fine. But from a criticism standpoint, like, he's doing a great job. Obviously, I'm going to sit there and be like, oh, you can see this. Like, he's choked, like, a little bit too much. But you have to because you have to – you have to make sacrifices to get the things that you want sometimes. And that is a sacrifice that you should make typically because it's like – it looks a little goofy. He looks cut out and his body proportions look a little eh. But that's me. That's because I'm pausing and I'm looking at it. If I'm not pausing and I'm not, like, staring intently at him – and at his hands, you don't notice it. It's just something that you notice if you edit it in green screen for a while. You're like, oh yeah, that's that's what that is. It's more like wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, goofy galaxy, diddly dimension, rickety reality stuff. stuff. Where every timeline and every reality exists at the same time, meaning there are no spin offs, every fate is canon, life is a line. Yes, that smutty dojin of Minamoto going ada ada on the order order is canon in some timeline. You can't prove me otherwise. Are you with me? I'm with it. Good. This is important because the end goal of every mage in the fate universe is to find a way to reach the root of Akasha. But Giga, why do all mages want to find the root of Akasha? Well, I'm glad you asked, probably confused viewer. I really hope you're not confused right now. This is just the beginning. Well, this would be a good time to talk about the magic system that exists in the Nasi verse, because as we all know, in this universe, mages exist and use magecraft, aka magic. Right? No. Wrong. Yeah. Dumb. Incorrect. Dummy. Erroneous. Dummy. Stupid. Stupid dummy. How could you ever think it was magic? It's called magic craft. Come on. If it was called magic, we'd call it magic. Mistaken. Yeah. I can't think of any more words off the top of my head. What are you? Erroneous. Idiot? Why would anyone assume that magic and magecraft are the same thing? That's what, what I'm saying. Guy? Typical man that can't tell the difference between magic and magecraft. No, 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 no. You got magecraft, the weak source limitation butter. Ooh, I can't believe it's not magic. And then you got the Chad true magic. This is the top tier gourmet shit. This is the shit real mages want to use. I just want to, you know, like, I ha I don't know what happened to my ad blocker because it's just gone. Uh, I downloaded a malware extension called Shampoo that I've been trying to get rid of, but Lord knows I can't. No matter how many times I erase it, no matter how many times I go to the, uh, what is it called? The setting files, ex manage extensions, no matter how often I do it, it's just, it just won't get rid of itself. It just, it just keeps coming back. And it just, it enrages me every time. But that's neither here nor there. What is here and what is there is, uh, he's right. Magic is Chad, but it's not that Chad. This is the top tier gourmet shit. This is the shit real mages want to use. The kind of shit Gordon Ramsay has to taste off and goes, hmm, 
Finally, some good fucking magic. But this premium shit can only be achieved by majors who view Akasha. And once someone gets that magic, that path to Akasha is cut off. And then the magic can only be used by the direct descendants of that original mage. Basically, oh, no one has cool. real magic and they're trying to get to the root of Akasha so they can stop using the peasant dollar store mage craft shit. Oh man, what if the third magic was just the power to create fate porn. But what's stopping with all it. mages from getting to this mythical place called Akasha? Well, you have this thing called the counter force. This is kind of like a safety mechanism that stops the world from going extinct because the earth is actually alive and has a will and don't worry about that right now. And the counter force okay. itself is made up of two parts. The collective unconscious will of humanity itself to survive, a liar, and the will of the planet itself, Gaia. Is... Is Japan just into Jungian psychology? Because I, I keep hearing the select the collective unconscious because it is an idea they teach you about it in college. Like it's it's a real thing. The Beatles were heavily influenced by it, which is again wild. Online. Why is this important? Because the counterforce has powerful defense mechanisms, like being able to summon heroic spirits from Earth's history in order to defend itself, which we call servants. Sound familiar? I understood that reference. So it'll intervene anyone trying to get to Akasha, aka the goofy galaxy timey wimey place, and majors have to find a way around it. Are you with me? Are you with me? Good. If you're already confused, Maybe. may I introduce to you the phrase everyone in the Fate fandom holds in the highest esteem as the holiest words in our gospel. Don't worry about it. Why is the cast of Fate State Night sharing a nice wholesome meal instead of trying to brutally murder each other? Don't worry about it. How do reality bubbles work? Don't worry about it. What is the moon? Don't worry about it. Please don't worry about it. Please don't ask me what the moon is. I'm not going to fucking talk about the moon. To recap, you have Akasha, the timey-wimey, goofy galaxy, rickety reality place that yeah. every mage is trying to get to so they can use the top tier gourmet true magic. But the only thing stopping them is the counter force, which they have to try and find a way around. Did you get all that? This is all the background information you need to know. So wait. The mages summon the servants and the servants stop the mages but then the mage sees the guy i'm our all right i'm out i'm still gonna watch the show but i, I brain hurts my brain my my, my my brain hurts my, mommy my, 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 what's wrong with me before we start the timeline Jesus Christ, we haven't even started the timeline yet. You know, originally I wanted to visualize the timeline physically by having things stuck against the wall strung together with a string or something like that, like you see in that Always Sunny meme. But then I soon realized I don't have a wall big enough. So that's why I'm using the green screen. Definitely not because I want to rip off Nakey Jakey. Now starting right at the beginning, Respect. before any majors, before any servants, before any Holy Grail wars, you have the Age of God. So yeah, I'm apparently with right at the beginning of Fate Law, there was this period of time where gods roamed the earth with man, mythical creatures existed, and I shit you not, physics apparently just wasn't a thing. Yeah, apparently Respect. this thing called mystery governed the law of the world, which I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Don't worry about it. Like, I just imagine in my head some ancient humans trying to let go of an apple and physics tries to drop it and mystery's like, no, 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 no. We do not do that here. And then the apple just flies off to fucking Narnia. But everything changed when the Sefer nation attacked. I'm with it. Or just Sefer. This next time period is called Deterioration. This titan called Sefer invaded and destroyed most of the world and was only beaten back by this mighty sword called Excalibur. After Naturally. the attack, the gods weaken a bit, mystery starts to wane, and physics is like, yo, is, um, is, is anyone going to drop that apple? Which takes us to separation so the gods are a little pissed that they can't go down to earth anymore because they're so weak so they make gilgamesh who's two-thirds god all right first off i saw gilgamesh fight and he was an animal absolutely devastational so i'm with it because gods don't give a shit about maths apparently with the intention of making him the keystone to connect the gods and the humans now for anyone not familiar with the fate it's... bursts how Oh, baby, don't go. Sorry. Simple and clean is the way that you're making me feel tonight. 
Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I swear. I swear. Because I don't know the rest of the rooms. But if I did, we would have it. We would belt it. I would edit it out. It'd be over. ...to connect the gods and the humans. Now, for anyone not familiar with the fate verse, how can I explain Gilgamesh? You know that one meme, is this some peasant joke I'm too poor to understand? Well, imagine if that meme was reincarnated as a person. That's Gilgamesh. So yeah, he decides to rebel and the gods were like, no, this guy? This guy doesn't want to take orders from us? No, come on, come on, you're, you're joshing us right now. This is a prank. Come on, where's the hidden cameras? I'm on MTV Punk, aren't I? And so with that, the gods cannot interfere with humans anymore. And thus begins the Age of Man. From the year I... 0 AD, the human population explodes, magic and magecraft is replaced with science, and most importantly, physics exists now, guys! Yeah! What I is that? By a party popper, but I completely forgot to. Alan, can you, uh, can you edit a party popper in this video, please? Thank you. That's right, screw your mystery. I have E equals MC squared. Okay, remember right at the beginning of this video when I said the Fate franchise was about this thing called the Holy Grail? Been there. Well, we can finally start talking about the Holy Grail. I'm See, with the it. Grail is touted as this omnipotent, magical, wish-granting device, and that's only partially true. See, around the 1800s, these epic magic gamer girls, called the Einsburn family, figured out a way to the root of Akasha. That place that gives you true epic gamer magic. Bye. So my question is, how do you... Uh, does the world know that Akasha exists then? Like, it's like, oh, around the 1800s, they figured out this way to the root of Akasha. How? Explain. Tell me. I don't... Uh, what's the... Did they, did they just... Did they just listen really hard? Uh, I have a friend who whenever someone asks him what his job is, he's like, no, I just go into stores near customer service and I just listen really hard for credit card numbers. <laughs> I just listen really hard for credit card numbers. By using the Holy Grail to summon to the room. I just listen really hard to find the room for Kasha. Kasha. That place that gives you true epic gamer magic. By using the it. Holy Grail to summon seven heroic spirits and then sacrifice them, and using that mana to summon an even greater grail called the Greater Grail, which has access to the root of Akasha. But of Lame. course, all the various magic gamer girls and boys couldn't agree on who would actually get access to this magic, so they decided to have a meeting to decide. One could even say that it was a magic. The Gathering. Or in fate, we just call this the Holy Grail War. Which finally leads us to the timelines to all the war so far. Oh, I can't believe I flunked world history and I'm about to recite the entire history of some fictional war that happened. <laughs> okay, so you got like the first Holy Grail War, which happened around the 1800s. This is when the three main mage families, Why? the Einsburns, the Tosakas, and the Matos, couldn't agree on who could get access to the Grail. So they were like, guys, we've got a bunch of servants lying about. Tournament arc, tournament arc, tournament arc, tournament arc, tour! This was hardly what you'd call an actual war though, and more like a 3 a.m. brawl at the local mage pub, which ended cause everyone got bored and time ran out. Then came the second Holy Grail War in the 1860s. 60 the years same parties later. involved, but this time everyone went a bit fucking mental cause everyone died, nobody won, and future generations were like, wait a minute. Do we need rules? What the fuck is a Geneva Convention? Then came the Third Been Holy there. Grail War in the 1930s, where the church gets involved because they're just like, um, are you using the term Holy Grail? God, are we allowed to copy strike that? And everyone's happy with that because they can enforce the rules. So the church is like, all right, gamers, I want a fair fight. No going for the eyes, no kicking below the belt, and for God's sakes, no summoning any illegal servants. So then the Irons burn summon an illegal servant. And so they get this totally new servant called Angramayu, a- Angramayu? It sounds like a god, and he's about to say AKA whatever the hell it is. AKA the angry mango, who's meant to be this <laughs> super uh. badass, ultra OP new servant that also wins them the war, except lol JK is actually super weak and dies, and is literally so angry he gives the grail food poisoning. Ooh. Then we got the fourth Holy Grail War, which is basically just the events of Fate Zero. I'm not going to spoil what happens in it. And nice. finally, we have the Grand Sugar Daddy that birthed everything we're talking about. The fifth Holy Grail War, aka the events of Fate Stay Night. Following nice. Shiro fighting in it, using the power of friendship and fucking. I mean, mana transfer. And this CG dragon still... Nah, they're going to smash.
I'll play, I'll play the game. I, I mean, like, I'll have to blur things out, but, like, I'll play it. I'll talk about it. I'm a, I'm a rowdy individual. You know what I mean? Like, I get hype. I get rowdy when I see things that make me rowdy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna hoot, I'm gonna holler, and I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna be the best fate player that we've ever seen. Give me a servant. I will win. Why will I win? I have no reason. I don't believe the power of friendship. That's lame. Except for all the times it isn't, you know? But it's lame 99% of the time. The Horns by Nightmare. Right? What's important here is that this war has at least three different timelines because the original Fate Stay Night was a visual novel with three different routes. You've got the Fate route, Unlimited Blade Word, and Heaven's Field. Or, to put it more simply, you got the Saber route, the Best Girl route. Damn it! I need to know who I want to smash! Let's go back just so we can get the roots down. So I know what I'm going to be shooting for in my playthrough. Because the answer is best. I will... Whoever... Hmm. Do I go based off... Do I go based off personality? Do I go based off looks? Or do I go based off of who I think the character works best with? Because that's that's the problem. It's why I always say that, no, your anime waifu will not love you same way mine would not love me. Like, listen, I've been a simp for Mocha Akashia since I was uh, 13 years old. And uh, I can tell you that there's no part of me that would be able to get that Ros Rosario off. So, like, she doesn't, she'd never love me back. Because how could she? Because I... Like, I, I, I can't meet the requirement as someone who genuinely never means her harm and only wants the best for her. Like, yes, I can, pr I believe I do, but I'm not Skune Otto, so I'm not gonna, it, she's not, she can't be mine. And you know what, it's, it's an unrequited love, it's one that, uh, I am too old to be having, so it's just, but you know, you always remember your first waifu, you always do. God, I'm pathetic. So fucking pathetic. Heaven's <laughs> Field. Or, to put it more simply, you got the Saber route, the Best Girl route, and the Sakura route with extra fucking, I mean, mana transfer. But it doesn't stop there because next we got Fate Hollow Adoraxia, which is kind of like a sequel to Fate Stay Night because it takes place six months after the events that happened in there. So you may I... be wondering which one of the three routes it follows, and the answer is... All of them. Yes. So one of the main girls from Fate Stay Night, Rin, is doing some magic experiments and uh, she does a little bit of an oopsie and um, completely fucks up the space-time continuum, merging Been all there. parallel universes together. And I know what you're thinking, this doesn't sound like a little oopsie. This sounds a bit more like a big oopsie. But it's all good because she looks great in thigh highs. So we're following this mage for Zed who was dead off screen in the original Fate Stay Night and she is now alive along with Angra Mayu, aka the Angry Mango. And they're stuck in a Groundhog Day type time loop living the same four days over and over and she has to find a way to escape without fading from existence because she was originally dead and I guess people die if they don't exist. Since most of this takes place in the time loop, this is basically just Fate Re-Zero Edition. So you can essentially just call it Fate Zero. And you know what? That's basically everything for the flagship Fate series. We did it, guys. That was pretty simple, right, guys? What are we missing? <laughs> but, of course, we are going to have to fill this timeline in with all the other Fate media out there. So, let's do the time warp again. Oh, my God. <sighs> Alan, fucking cut that. All right. This epic memer just truly understands how life works, and I'm with it. All right, so let's start with Fate Apocrypha. So the Fate Apocrypha timeline is exactly identical to the original timeline, except when we get to the Third Holy Grail War, where the timeline was like, you know what? Nazis. Because of course it's the fucking Nazis. So the Nazis join the Third Holy us. Grail War, and instead of there being a winner, the Nazis steal the Great Grail system. And so after that, a Transylvanian Nazi mage guy steals it from the Nazis again. And then I guess the Nazis go on to lose World War II as usual. Fast forward to the future and somehow the entire world finds out about the Greater Grail system and everyone and their dog tries to make a cheap imitation of it. And so because of this, the trans- How do you make- Do I just- Do I just go out? Like, I've seen people make metal. How the f- 
how the flack do you make a holy grail? I don't get it. Albanian Nazi sorcerer guy vows to make the holy grail war great again. And so he makes the great holy grail war. I'm with it. I shit you not, this is what it's called. And so now instead of seven servants, you have 14 servants separated into two teams, red and black. That's right, it's a team deathmatch. Team deathmatch! 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 Stab it! And so we get... Oh, team deathmatch. I guess there was an abridged series that had little Karibo I didn't know about. God, I miss abridged series. God, I miss Kemper abridged. God, I miss Camphor. I should watch Camphor, but I refuse to. Because I only know it from the abridged series, and if it's not lesbians fighting to the death in a red versus blue team deathmatch, then I don't want to watch. Season of red versus black, Mordred is hot, and a spell will make straight guys question their sexuality, and gay guys question their sexuality, and gay girls question their sexuality. And me question my life choices for spending $400 for a dick. That concludes the events of Hitler's Day Night. Next on the menu, we have today's menu for Emia family. Did you, did, did you see what I did there? This is, I think, just another alternate ending to the fifth Holy Grail War, where I guess nobody dies and they all just sit around cooking and playing volleyball and being happy. And this is canon, okay? They never explain where this takes place on the timeline, but I don't care. They're all happy. Akasha made it. It's canon like in my mind this is the reality when someone just tried playing the fake visual novel but got bored five minutes after reading words and then just left and never came back and then all these characters are just sitting around having a gay old time waiting for the holy grail war to start this is what happened this is the reality where c dog va tried to play fate all right so i'm just I'm gonna make it. a fate stay night bubble and then i'm gonna put fate tiger coliseum and fake unlimited codes in this bubble because they're just fighting games and they're already beating the shit out of each other in the series anyway. So I guess yeah. these are just the filler episodes we never got to see. Then we've got that. Fate School Life, which is kind of like a slice of life spin-off in the Fate Stay Night universe that also has Adaraxia characters in it. So I guess it goes here. Can you tell how I'm sure I am right now? Lord Elmaloy's Case Files. This is basically just CSI magic that takes place after Fate Zero, but before Fate Stay Night, starring Fate Zero's Waver. Except Waver's gone from down Daddy, step on me to uh, 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 oh. Step on me, daddy. Oh. I'm with that. It's called character development, and I've never been happier to see it. All right. Now we get into the manly shit. Fate DJ Khaled, line of Prisma Ilya, is a spin-off where Ilya becomes a magical girl. And instead of summoning servants, the magical girls can use these magical cards to channel the power of a servant. And also there's a magical talky wand, don't worry about it. Before I properly got it. into the Fate franchise, I thought that this was just an unrelated spin-off that had nothing to do with the main universe, but no. Not only does this directly diverge from the main timeline, but it has two separate universes within its own universe. It's a fucking Ilya multiverse. And the beginning of the Ilya multiverse doesn't even have Ilya in it. Oh, yeah, it's God, I dead. love you so much, Fate, but you just don't make things easy, do you? All right, no, I'm going to do my best, so stick with me here. The first universe is the one detailed in the movie Oath Under Snow, following this girl called Miyu, which is why we call this the Miyuverse, because her name is Miyu and she's the child of God, don't worry about it. She's taken in by Shiro, and then they have another Holy Grail War, but not the usual Holy Grail War, but the Ironsworth Holy Grail War. Can you guess why it's called the Ironsworth Holy Grail War? because it was made by the Iron Man. Shiro then sends Miyu to an alternate universe, which we call the Iliaverse, which is all sunshine and rainbows, where the fourth Holy Grail War didn't happen and Kiritsugu's father of the year. You got cute girls doing cute things, cute girls doing magical things, and cute girls doing each other. This is the universe where season one and two of Prisma Ilia happens, but then you have season three, which jumps back into the Miyuverse. And if you think that complicates the timeline, how about this little knowledge of Nugget? So in the original Face Day Night, Ilya is 18. She's 18. She's older than Shiro. But in the Iliaverse, she's the same age as when the timelines diverge, which theoretically should make her the same age as she was in Fate Stay Night. But she's not. And the series makes it very clear that she is under 18. So which is it, Fate? Which is it? I need to know. You know, I would say don't worry about it. 
but I'm pretty sure the FBI are going to do that for me. All right, moving <laughs> the fuck on from this mess of a legal situation. You're fair fate. enough. Also known as the Fate Extra universe. This splits off from the Third Holy Grail War in the Angry Mango timeline, where all the world's mana dries up because some kind of event. So in the 2030s, all the Woodstock. It had to have been Woodstock. I have no idea. Just in 1970, one of the 70s. Think of that 70s show in Woodstock. Maybe Nixon getting ousted? Oh, the mana dries up because some kind of event. So in the 2030s, all the mages turned into hackers and they tried to hack the moon because the moon has a supercomputer on it that was placed there by aliens that they found. And so inside this supercomputer moon, there exists this entire digital world. And so the supercomputer moon is hosting a virtual reality holy grail war because it's actually alive. Why? I don't realize how ridiculous this sounds until I read it out loud. Don't worry about it. So yeah, it turns out I'm the not. moon no shit and you can hack the moon. And it also has Rin, Sakura and Kirei from the original Face Day Night. But not the original Rin, Sakura and Kirei from the original Face Day Night. What are you, stupid? They're just characters who look, sound and dress exactly the same. But they're different. Are you worrying about it? Because I'm not. So you got the Fate Good. Extra games, the Fate Extra Triple C games, and then you got the anime. Fate Extra Last Encore in its own separate timeline that takes place in the year 3000. And Rin's great, great, great granddaughter. It's just fucking Rin. Fate Grand Order. <laughs> oh God, you're not going to make me break down Fate Grand Order. All right. Now we're truly in hell. So Fate Go is a mobile gacha game along some anime adaptations where the first Holy Grail War never happened, the world is fucked for some reason, and you have got to travel back in time to various points in history to fix the fucking timeline. And, every and smash the baddies! Hopefully. Probably not. But we could. <laughs> there are days where I just ask myself, at what point did I become this depraved? And... I don't know where where it started. I couldn't I really could not tell you where the depravity started. I could tell you that it's it's under lock and key most of the time. I could tell you that I'm trying to be better, but I'd be lying to you, and I don't think lying to the audience is a fair thing. I'm always as transparent as I can be with you. I let you know what my shortcomings are. I let you know what uh my quitcomings are. pause so um you know i let you know the good the bad and the dirty but we uh just maybe maybe it was watching i'm trying to think uh that netflix original movie milf at like 13 that was a wild film uh anyway let's just keep going Every different timeline you fix is called singularities. Basically, imagine Fate Back to the Future, except there are like seven sequels, all with different diverging timelines, and you're not trying to fuck your mum, you're just trying to fuck all the servants. All right, so yes! simplicity. Yeah. Let me in. Let me in. Sake, I think it would just be easier if I just draw out the Fate Go timeline. <laughs> And then here in his own corner is just Fate Prototype, which is Kinokunasu's original concept for Fate, where King Arthur's actually a guy? Get, get out of here with your damn historical inaccuracies. So essentially, this is just a non-existent project because the only thing that exists is a 12-minute trailer that was made purely for fan service. Which is even more bizarre with that. when you consider Fate Prototype Fragments of Sky Silver, which is the prequel to Fate Prototype. They made a prequel a full light novel prequel to a 12 minute commercial. Like, did I really think Fate fans were that hungry for content? <laughs> I've yes. Moon just sitting there being like, all right, Fate fans, open wide. Oh, oh content, oh, give me anything. And then this pre That looks like a, oh God, I hate myself. Prequel to a project that basically doesn't even exist as a side story called Fate Labyrinth. A side story. This is why Tsukihime fans are on Suicide Watch. Listen, I uh, I have nothing to comment on other than the Kingdom Hearts music in the background. We all know that I'm a stickler for Kingdom Hearts. Always love it. It is uh, one of my favorite. I can't say it's one of my favorite series, but like 
the music in it just slaps harder than uh, probably an alcoholic father. God, I just... Why do I say it? Why why does my brain go... We're really just watching me just kind of unravel at real time, aren't we, today? But I don't know why I say it. I don't know what causes me to do it. I just do it, you know? I just... Whatever pops in my head, say it. Just whatever. Uh, the self-filter is so difficult for me. Maybe my uh, character arc for the Fate series will be uh, trying to be a better person. It won't happen, but we can pretend like it will. A side story! This is why Tsukihime fans are on Suicide Watch. <sighs> you can tell that line was written months ago because, um... Yeah, where the fuck did this come from? And all this would be a completely alternate universe with no connection to the original universe, but I shit you not, one of the characters has a dream that connects this universe to the Fate Stay Night universe. <laughs> it's literally canon by dream. All right, I think we're getting close to the end. Next is Fate Strange Fake. This is a light novel series that takes place after the Fifth Holy Grail War in America, where they do their own Holy Grail War with hookers and blackjack, written by the same guy who did Barkano. As a recording, we don't I'm know if this it. follows on from the main flagship timeline or is part of an alternate universe, but what we do know is that there's a servant called Watcher and it's literally just a fucking whale in the sky. I'm sorry, That's I must dope. have missed the legend where a fucking flying whale saves Earth. Does Free Willy count as a legendary hero of history now? Let's face yes. type redline. It's Tokyo in the 1940s. Nazis are at it again, but this time so are the Japanese military. It's the third Grail War with seemingly no other connections to any other Grails, and it's a manga drawn by the Demon Slayer mangaka. We got fake right Cool. Through. Not a lot about this is known right now because it's not been officially translated, but what we do know is that it's set in the future after some kind of Holy Grail War, and somehow everyone has their own Holy Grail. And also there's this new servant called Voyager, who I guess is the Voyager space probe, except I have no fucking clue how a space probe becomes a servant, let alone a blonde show to boy, let alone a blonde show to boy space probe servant. And don't tell me to worry about it, cause I'm not. Can you see how much I'm not worrying about it? I am not worrying about it. Good. You shouldn't. But seriously, how the fuck? And finally, in a bubble within You're its own bubble it. within its own fucking dimension is Carnival Phantasm, where all the fake characters and other characters from Nasu's other works are just hanging out, I guess. Doesn't make any sense. I have no idea where this fits in the timeline. I think this is just a bubble reality where Akashi got fucking drunk. And that's it. That is the long version. Kinda. Oh, but Giga, what about the rest of the Nasu verse? Are you gonna do that as well? No. How about no? Originally, this was meant to be a grand video where I talked about all the funny and ridiculous things I found out about fate lore as a whole. But when I started it, I kind of realized I'm gonna need 20 minutes just to explain the fucking timeline. So you know what? This may just be the first part in a multi-series lecture from hell. Because the worst thing about fate is that after going through all the timelines, after connecting all the lore, after spending far too many hours consuming fate media and reading pages upon pages of wiki articles, it kind of makes sense. Oh God, this chart actually makes sense to me. The entire timeline is actually the simplest part of fate lore. Fate is just an all encompassing whole that just gets darker and gloomier the deeper you go down. People wonder what's at the bottom of the abyss in Maiden Abyss. It's just the fucking entrance to the Fate Hole. You want the real short version Fate newcomers? You watch either of these two, and then watch this. So, okay, Fate Zero or Fate Stay Night Ultimate Bloodworks or the Fate Stay Night Heaven. And then Game. watch whatever the fuck you want. Or you know what? Fuck all this. Start with the spin-off series. Start with lesbian lollies kissing. Start with Fate Master Chef. Fuck. Start with the Dijinshis for all I care. Just ignore all the shitstorm going on in the comment section right now. The reality is, it doesn't really matter where you start. As long as it looks interesting to you, then go for it. The problem is, there's so many people who are obsessed with optimizing the perfect read and watch order that they forget that if you enjoy the experience and it gets you into Fate, then who the fuck cares what order you watch it in? Cause look, memes aside, the fate lore may be a convoluted mess to unravel, but it is an awesome franchise. Oh it's a my series goodness. that can have amazing fights with balls to the walls action and magical moments that cut deep into your heart. And then Thomas Edison shows up as a lion. Because if you watch the end of this video knowing nothing about fate, and this is the video that's convinced you to give it a try, 
What the fuck is wrong with you? Hi. Hi. Uh, daddy issues. Um, depression, anxiety. Uh, and you know what? I, I, uh, I'm trying to think what else is wrong with me. One time I didn't put my shopping cart back. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tricky bitch like that. You know what I mean? You know, I've, I've always put it back except the one time and the one time I didn't, it was wrong. It was very wrong of me. So I'm sorry. I am genuinely, I will, uh, put my resume in. I will let people know about my grave sin. And we'll call it a day. All right. This, this guy you interested in faint? Oh God, why didn't you just listen to me the first time and go with the short version? You know what? Fuck this. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing faint anymore. I'm literally cool. gonna go crazy. You know what? I lied. This isn't even the long version. Hey guys, I I won't really worry about it. Hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you again to Honkai Impact for sponsoring me today. Not that bad. And also thank you very much to Ivido, The Walto, Pain Patchet, Elephant, Basil, and everyone else, my fate gurus and guiding me through this hell. Gurus, and thank you very much for helping me do the research for other for fact checking this song. You can blame an entire Discord server for it. Something's still probably wrong though. And if you want to join the monthly calls where literally someone mentions fate every fucking month, which is how this video got started in the first place, check out I'm my Patreon it. in production. Yeah. And I really hope you enjoy the start of this video because it took a lot of work. And I'll I let him do a stop. I had a really, really fun time filming this video. Me and my editor have been putting off working on this video for so long because we knew how much work it would take. But yeah, as I said earlier, this probably won't be the only Fate video I put out because we've done way more research than what I've put into this video. So I hope you're excited for the next one because sure. both me and my editor are really looking forward to working on another video like this. Right, Alan? I do. Yeah. Editor note, I, I, you do another Fate video, I'm quitting. I'm going to get that meant if. <laughs> that Alan. Such a joker. Anyway, that's it from me. No further updates. I've been Gigak, and I hope you enjoy the hell we're about to walk into. Yes. All right, everyone. Well, he's done. I'm done. You're done. We're all done. Today, we're going to vibe. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that, all that jazz, because it really helps me out. It makes me a better content creator. It lets me know what you want to watch. It doesn't actually, but if you like this video, if you would like to see me watch more memes, if you'd like to watch, if just, just comment, honestly, just tell me everything you want out of life, because you know what? That's what I do anyway. I give you all my thoughts, my ideas. I let you throw rocks at the very, very, very unstable house that is my life. And, uh, yeah. You know what? That's crazy. Because, like, I, I genuinely have a lot of confidence and I am a very fun person to be around. I sound so fucking bitchy. Jesus. <sighs> anyway, I post every day. Peace out. I'll see you tomorrow. I think we're doing Chibi Chapter two which i have recorded no not chapter two season three part one those are the words those are correct words cool